So what we're going to do is uh, present to you um, this Innovate UK project that we've been working on. Uh, there's six partners involved. I think we've got four out of the six here with us tonight. Um, and Mia from 3D Repo is going to give us a demo. Um, I'm Beth from Mace, by the way, which is a construction and consultancy company. Um, I've been acting as project manager uh, for this project over the last 18 months. And I'll give you an overview on what we've done, the challenges we've faced, uh, and the solution we've been coming up with. I would say it's very much been us more down in the dirt than some of the sort of shiny things we've been seeing today um, but you'll certainly get a flavor for what we've gone through to, to get to where we are today so uh, way back in 2019 this alarming stat uh, prompted Innovate UK to set up a competition um, this is from Transforming Construction um, and they're, they're looking to try and get projects that we're looking to uh, make the construction industry more productive and naturally we would want digital and data to be a large part of that. Um, I bring this slide up because this uh, emphasizes later on just the challenges that we faced and I think is far more realistic uh, around the problem. So volume of data, project data has doubled over the last three years, yet only 12% have always, incorpor uh, always incorporate project data into their decision making and they reckon one third of all bad decisions were made as a result of bad data. And my goodness, I think we've experienced like that suspicion and that reticence uh, with a lot of the people we've been involved with the last 18 months. Um, so our six partners got together and we sort of said, what are some of the key challenges we want to solve? Um, so there are, there are so many parties involved in construction and all of you are trying to produce your dashboards, but you're actually doing the same sort of dashboards, but all using separate data, it's, it's very messy. There's poor, trans poor transparency, uh, especially for the poor subcontractors at the bottom. Um, the average reporting cycle in construction is about 30 days for getting something from the bottom to the top or to a decision maker, which is just unacceptable. You can't, you can't action that. Um, exactly, those, those lag data exchanges. And let's be honest, it's largely still Excel and email. Um, and again, the large number of parties involved are very siloed. No one wants to share. Um, there just sort of isn't that, that sort of contractual setup largely as well. And the annoying software lock-in for those that want to get advanced, uh, they're either dictated, um, T -ones are, tier ones are dictating to the poor SMEs who have another tier one dictating to them elsewhere. And so they end up just sticking to Excel and email because it's easier. Um, and because it's project-driven construction, we do something once, so loads of control rooms exist, but everyone does it bespoke. It's just like our projects, um, and none of the learning's carried over. No one's building for repeatability, which is exactly what we wanted to address. So these are all of our partners involved. Um, Mace, we're acting as the lead and offering up our construction projects and our, our people. Uh, 3D Repo, uh, obviously our, our sort of 3D data visualization experts. Um, Every file have acted as software engineers building the architecture behind the scenes, um, but they also specialize in um, on-site sort of data capture, which is really vital for having that actual versus planned. Uh, UCL have brought the, um, the real-time analytics and they're looking at business models for how we can sell this later on. Imperial College did some fantastic work around the actual data analytics. Uh, we wanted to get to predictive analytics and we never quite got there and I, I, we'll, we'll see what we can do with it after. Uh, and Mission Room is exactly what you're seeing here today in the hardware form. So, our highfalutin aim was to have a NASA-style control room for construction. Um, that's pretty big for one of the least digitized industries in the world. Um, and I think we've definitely experienced that, that challenge as we've gone along. But, but the vision was big, so we, we started wild. And the vision was that for this control room, that your data should be able to roll up and roll down. So, so if you were your, your operative on the level, on the, the sort of team, on boots on the ground type person, that you could get useful information, that you could go in action immediately in the field. Management could make those better decisions, and clients were finally getting real-time, very transparent data as well. But when we got on to our first project, this is going to give you a taste of the actual reality. Um, hopefully this will play. So this was our first control room at Paddington Square. This is what it looked like when we first arrived. This was literally our first day. And it's just covered in whiteboards. So much is still analog. And I know we're seeing amazing tools here today. Um, which, but, but at the end of the day, those are for the very small percentage. This is where the majority of people lie, and you've got to bring them on that journey, and that's been more than half the effort, as we'll see. Um, and then when we looked under the bonnet, it was a case of 
say this is Paddington, all the solutions are just separate. They are reporting um, in their own tools. No one's talking to each other. And across MACE, the projects that were using, using different softwares, nothing is set up in a particularly standardized way. There are a few golden projects doing it right, but this is largely the average. Um, so yeah, it's unstructured, disconnected, and complicated. This is what we're facing. So we got on there and we had to go through this huge journey of actually realizing maybe we take a step back, maybe it's not about um, sort of being able to give this, this amazing sort of whiz-bang solution, but getting their data right. And I won't go through all of this, but it gives you an idea of the, the painstaking things we've had to go through uh, to get them up to speed. And although we thought it was a real hindrance at first, it was, I think, a blessing in disguise because we wanted to build a repeatable control room um, that wasn't just one-off, that wasn't something that was just dictated in a, a shiny toy that you'll just be forced to use, but understand what it takes to get projects, construction projects as they are now, up to speed and, and ready for something like a control room. Um, so yeah, some really exciting and interesting stuff we did along here as well. And again, just to emphasize, improving the data quality is where most of our time has gone on this project. It's, it's vital that we get that, that people and uh, yeah, people engagement is, is so key. Um, this was a really impressive piece of work done by Imperial, which was so important. Um, so this was about, they, they literally looked and mapped all of the software and tools and reports being done on the project, which is the horrific stuff you can see behind. Um, and we tried to sort of start realizing how can we connect all of these siloed data siloed system, sorry, um, and we needed to find these, these small sort of uh, semantic data points that could connect, and we sort of identified that really there were only three um, that were just were absolutely core to connecting the ultimate systems that our on-site guys needed in, in order to meet the requirements they wanted for their control room. So we went from all of that mix and match data, and we wanted to be able to say that you can keep your systems, you can sort of keep a little bit of that chaos, but we would put in place the, um, what we're calling the, the product production control room, uh, standardized data layer, where as many automated feeds, data feeds as we can get in, so you're getting your data as real time as possible, and, and then pushing it into, whether it's an online dashboard or your physical control room, that should be able to, again, be dictated by you, so keeping things as fluid as possible. So yes, structured, connected, simple is the aim. And I bring this back to all of the challenges we had before, and this is what we've now set up. These are kind of the core elements. They're, they're common core elements, but honestly, it solves some of the biggest problems construction are facing. Um, and this is what we've been spending our time putting, uh, getting this together. So I'm now gonna pass over to Mia for a demo of the system today. This is because, annoyingly, we, we weren't able to get permission from the client from Paddington to share what we've done. Um, so this is a, an illustration of the features uh, that we've devised to date, essentially. Yep. Thanks, Thank Beth. Um, so I'm not sure if everyone can see the screen here, but I'll just try and be uh, as uh, <laughs> comprehensive enough. <laughs> All right, um, so actually here the focus is a project agnostic data and there's someone who approached me here uh, tonight and he came and he was like, wow, like you guys brought all of this together into one platform. And I said, no, the ultimate platform does not exist. Uh, we're using Power BI uh, to visualize all the data that is being uh, pulled from a large data warehouse from Evifile. Um, that is basically integrating with other platforms such as uh, the, the CDEs for that project. I think it was Aconex, BIM 360 Plan, BIM 360 Field. So really the focus here, one of the main uh, uh, takeaway I would say is the word integration. How can we try to find solutions for data coming from different sources to talk to each other and connect them into a single environment and then connect that um, project, construction project management related data to the 3D model, back to the 3D model environment. And this is what we try to do here. So as uh, Beth mentioned, we're not using the actual client's data. So this is a kind of a proof of concept to show you how it works. Um, so if I talk a bit about the uh, dashboards themselves, so we created a dashboard generation uh, standardization tool using uh, HTML and CSS. So for those of you who have uh, used uh, Power BI before, you'll notice that it's a bit uh, complicated and challenging to uh, bring those layouts together. 
Um, so we really wanted, we thought about, you know, for later when we scale the project across like other MACE uh, construction projects, uh, for anyone, any user to come and pick it up, uh, we wanted to establish a certain level so that no matter what your background is, whether you're a structural engineer, whether you're on site or uh, something else, um, you can just uh, create those dashboards yourself. So you get to a level of confidence where you're able to basically design those yourselves. So if you are the ones uh, having owning that data, then you can come and collaborate. So you know of 3G Repo as a BIM coordination and collaboration tool, but here I'm just going to talk a bit more about the project uh, management uh, perspective um, that uh, basically allows us to link the 3G uh, model environment, the 3G data, the metadata that is stored within the 3G model um, to communicate and to link it directly with the um, for instance, the delivery management system, the, pack the work packages, and really integrating that 3G data with uh, other um, uh, data sources. Even site photographies, I think we've got another uh, generic dashboard um, that uh, you guys can see um, later uh, that pulls in the, the site photography uh, from, si from the site. So now I'm just gonna go over those dashboards for you. Um, in here, what we did is we uploaded a, like, some of you guys already know that uh, standard Revit clinic model uh, with uh, the rooms uh, data, the rooms information um, to 3G repo. And then uh, because we have an open API that allows us to connect to the Power BI uh, platform, we brought in uh, the, the model viewer to Power BI and we connected that with the other uh, data sources uh, that, were, uh, that are pulling large data um, uh, uh, from uh, EVI file and other uh, applications. So um, if I look here at this uh, standard clinic model that shows you the rooms, uh, I can basically filter that uh, model. So really the idea here is to try to deviate again from those uh, long exhaustive uh, spreadsheets on Excel because um, people, we found out that people like to have all that information condensed visually. So really the, the benefit here is that the main model acts as a search engine for your entire data. So if I look at the first floor, for example, I'm going to be able to filter all those rooms. Um, I can even look at room validation, the, the status of those rooms, uh, the status of uh, the issues that I, uh, that I mark on site. So um, within the context of that production control room, uh, really any subcontractor who is here and just uh, wants to take a look at what's going on, I can really filter by the work completed. So if I click here, I'm gonna, literally instantly visualize all the rooms in the models that have uh, uh, a, stat a status with the work completed. Uh, same goes for uh, root cause, for example. I can look at the process, um, but really like you name them. And with the mission room, there is a really nice tool in here uh, so that we can instantly mark any issue that we think uh, we want to communicate even further with the team. So if I'm looking at, um, let's say, I'm just gonna, uh, go to the second floor uh, and I want to map this out. I'm just going to create really here a, a markup and I'm going to link it to those rooms in the second floor. Instantly, I can just save that and it goes to the system and then there you go. We're just, again, providing more context to the construction project management data, but also the 3D model information, and we're really linking that back to those uh, existing um, uh, information. Uh, and this is a live project, so anytime we've got the control room, you know, people can collaborate in real time, we can just, just send that back. Um, and really, uh, because we're using also Power BI, any new model revision, any model changes, you can just hit a refresh button and it will instantly pull out the latest data on demand from 3D repo. If I come here now, I'm looking at those issues that I created within the 3G repo environment. So not only I'm looking at, for example, the CDE BIM 360 field issues uh, uh, data, but I can also just uh, look at a more granular level. Let's say we're looking at some data for fit out or some circulation diagrams. I can really like instantly filter out what I've, whatever I need. I can look at, uh, you know, uh, who that uh, issue was assigned to. Uh, even look at the priorities. Um, 
So really, this is how we start to make use of the, the model uh, in context with the construction uh, uh, data. Um, and then in here, uh, looking again at the user requirements, um, <laughs> Looking again at the user requirements uh, from a production control room perspective, uh, we can even map out the work packages, the uh, deliverables KPIs, and the high risk activities. And all of that in here is, um, this is kind of a mock up to show you that we can really extract any kind of uh, information. And so you name them really, like if you want to look at logistic management systems, any kind of data that is made available within the project, you can instantly bring it uh, in here. Now I won't lie to you we face so many challenges and um, it's not always easy so really like the, the the ultimate platform does not exist and so we invite you all to like make use of the open APIs and try to look at possible ways of and solutions at how you can possibly integrate your data uh, not only with 3D repo but in general like uh, really like find some ways that the data can talk to each other because you won't be able to really just condense it and centralize it all in one place. Um, if I forgot anything and that you want to add. I think you covered it all. Right. That was <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And just to round up so it's essentially planning and project controls for construction in a digitalized way which it's been severely lacking and we're now demonstrating repeatability of this system across projects so that we can lift and shift it recreate it really quickly and the next phase is to have the sort of master control room the, the portfolio overview so we can zoom in across uh, in the trial maces projects but again this is something clients are really interested in as well uh, they want to be able to manage their portfolios uh, just as much um, and lastly, these are some of the outcomes we're looking to hit as well, uh, God willing, by the end of the project. Um, so literally physically being able to measure the reduction in time uh, they spend on data entry and, and having to um, do their own reporting. Um, as we said, so many needs on that front uh, and, and repetition. And productivity, percentage of tasks completed versus planned. Um, increasing certainty of program, obviously a huge one. And the one that's really hard to quantify is the decision making, which I think is the most impactful. Um, but that's, that's sort of the most immediate impact people feel when they're using the control room. So that's a brief overview of where we are. Let's see where we get to in six months. Um, yeah, free for, free for any questions uh, for drinks afterwards as well. So yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.